Hey guys, so I've noticed some things and I find it very weird and I'm almost certain that this is not an ideology based behavior. Like it's not something that only leftists do. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a human based behavior, but I'm not on the far right or a conservative, so I don't know what the fuck they'd be doing in the house. I could only talk about what I've noticed and what I've seen and why I think it is the way that it is. So, in conversing on social media, and let's be honest, this is only on social media because we don't really be doing this shit in real fucking life, you know what I'm saying? But while on social media, I noticed that when we are talking to each other, you know, be it on Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, whatever the fuck. When we're talking to each other, I'm noticing that there are times when we talk to each other as if we don't know who the fuck we talking to. You know what I'm saying? As if we are talking to, like, a pre-constructed individual. And I find it interesting and detrimental to the left you know, extensively. So here's, um, here's an example of what I'm talking about. So last week, the grapevine did a panel on black and Asian American relations today, right? And I guess the panel was supposed to be about how do we mend these relationships, all this other shit. Now it was clear from the beginning of the conversation that people came in with pre-registered grievance and butthurt that they planned to hold their counterparts accountable for right and even when the conversation started and they and it was clear by that time that the people they were talking to weren't this wasn't going to be a combative or debative conversation but a collaborative conversation they didn't shift gears like they still try to push these grievances on to people, um, despite the fact that most of the time these motherfuckers like agreed. And even still, there was like one chick on that panel who was like super left, like super left. And because they were so hell bent on having this conversation with this pre-conscribed -cons notion, they totally skipped what would have been a very interesting conversation to have with that person, you know what I'm saying? But like, like for instance, the topic of anti-blackness and the basic like human rights violations that China's been doing and enacting against African migrant workers either in China or in Africa working with these Chinese companies came up, right? And I get it. That's totally a topic that needs to be talked about, especially right about now because it's like happening right about now. And Africans... African migrant workers are being scapegoated by the Chinese for this epidemic. We should definitely talk about that. But the Asian people who were on that panel, one, aren't Chinese ethnically, two, aren't Chinese nationally, you know what I'm saying? And three, wholly agreed and was totally on the same page about how fucked up that whole situation was. And yet, the structure of the conversation and the structure of the exchange didn't change to fit who the fuck they was talking to. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of things were left out. A lot of things were missed. A lot of time was wasted. Um, like the concept of the model minority and shit. Spent a lot of time on that. And it's like, okay, all of the people on that panel, because, I mean, like, it's, from the nature of what the fuck the grapevine is. They don't get super far right niggas going on that goddamn show. So it's like, these people totally agree with the existence of the model minority. They acknowledged it. They even went as far as to expand on it and add context and history to it. And something they didn't have to do, character-wise, why individuals who do engage and try to benefit from that socio concept why they do the shit that they do 
Despite the fact that it's not even them that tries to engage into the shit. And it was like, okay, we're wasting a lot of fucking time. And why aren't you guys shifting gears now that you know that who the fuck you're talking to is not who the fuck you're talking to? You know what I'm saying? And I've seen this happen a lot. I, I like, I do a lot and spend a lot of time just watching y'all talk to each other and shit. And I think I know what the problem is. I'm pretty sure I do, right? And it's because, at least on the left, because I can only speak on what I've experienced, I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure. This shit is happening on the right as well. But again, that ain't my house. I can't speak on it. I'm pretty sure they got couches in their house too. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So like on the left, I've noticed that like, we don't leave our bubbles. And I mean, there's study after study after study that y'all can go on Google Scholar and find that talk about the fact that people who hold different ideologies, they don't live in mixed communities anymore. We are ever more segregated based on our political ideology on top of that, putting race and all that other shit, right? And so I know in real life, we ain't talking to each other. So the only access that we have to people who fundamentally see the world differently than us is online. But how we engage with each other is very different. So I've noticed that we have our little bubbles and everybody has bubbles on bubbles on bubbles. It's like fucking bubble inception, right? Where we first phase is that we find somebody within our bubble that has the characteristics as vague as they can be. They have those characteristics, so we go to them and we talk to them with all the same verver and shit, but it's safer because it's like you're on my side, so you're not going to have, I know for a fact that the, uh, the discussion's probably not gonna be in bad faith, and it probably won't be as emotionally charged, but I'm just gonna unload all of the shit that I feel right now onto you, right? And I've, I've experienced that as a veteran where people, it's one of the reasons why, there are several reasons why I keep my mouth shut about being a fucking veteran. It's not that I'm not um, proud of my actions. I don't think that it's actions that you need to be proud of, but it's like, I did what I did and I did it for reasons. And if you wanted to know why I did them, I would gladly fucking tell you if you gave a fuck, right? But for the most part, I don't go parading around in left spaces being like Joe G.I. Jane, because one, that's not me. And two, it ain't my time yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't talk about being a veteran. Here's, the, here's one of the main reasons. One, because I don't feel like arguing with a stranger about some shit that ain't got really anything to do with me. You know what I'm saying? And two, I low-key feel like for a lot of lefty veterans, it's like, hey, I am keenly aware that the right have a militia. Albeit, they have a lot of guns. A lot of them don't know how to use them properly. A lot of them don't know how to use their PPE properly. Most of them have never been in the military, but they have the weapons, right? And if shit were to pop off, like right now they're cosplaying, but like all gangs, shit don't get real until somebody gets hurt. And when somebody gets hurt, then shit gets real, right? So it's like, I know that that's inevitable. They cosplaying right now, but it's inevitable. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Something's going to pop off. And at that moment, that will be my time to pop up, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like instead of me being butthurt and going out of my way to argue with people who hate military or people who have military experience, I'm just gonna let y'all have it. Do whatever the fuck y'all wanna do. Have your theoretical conversations and shit because right now it's pretty clear that it's a time of comfort. It's a time where you can have all those fucking theoretical conversations and all the other shit. Ain't shit really going down in anybody's fucking neighborhood, right? So it's like, all right, you do you. But I digress. So as a veteran, people find out that I'm a veteran. I really don't hide it. And usually this shit comes around around Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and all that shit. Because that's usually the only time that I bring up the fact that I was a veteran, like, with fervor right so it's like oh you're a veteran you're a murderer you kill all these people blah 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 fuck you military industrial complex is terrible blah 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 blah. and for me it's like look dude you're you're preaching to the choir because in all honesty before i even joined the military like while you were working your way through hope and change in obama i was already 
on that page. Like literally financial circumstances brought me into the military. So it's like, I totally get what you're saying and all that good shit, but I don't like, I understand that the problem is more complicated than that. So it's like, I'm not gonna sit here and let you yell at me because I see that you are practicing. You are not talking to me, Haven. You are talking to whatever imaginary caricature you created in your mind and you just want to have like, you know, a practice run to see if what you're, if the arguments you've concocted make any fucking sense or at least slap it hard enough for niggas to start liking all your shit a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, do you. But to me, that's harmful in the grand scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? For one, it isolates people. Like there are some veterans who very much, like I know a lot of them, who are very much lefty minded. You know, there are certain things that just like on basis of principle, they adhere to, but they're not going to go into any of these lefty spaces because who the fuck wants to sit here and argue with some fucking nerd for three hours? Nobody, I'd much rather be naked in my room masturbating. You know what I'm saying? Like people don't wanna deal with that shit. And it's, I, I get it, you know, I get it. Me personally, I don't give a fuck because I have a mute button and I can turn this phone off. Like, you know, but there are other people who are not like me and they will n avoid an entire group because of the actions of a few, because you know, we're humans and we react to negative stimuli. Like we react to negative stimuli more than positive stimuli. So it's like, I get it, it's isolating. But not only is it isolating of people who are, you're giving this shit to, it's isolating for yourself as well. Because I've noticed that this method that people use, it really is peacocking in a way that shows that you are the good person and everyone who thinks the way that you do, likes what you're saying, agrees with what you're saying, they're the good people too, and everybody else is the bad person. And that's a problem because you will not be able to fight whatever fucking revolution it is that you want to fucking fight, supposedly, which is you and your five Twitter friends. It's not going to happen at all. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it isolates in a compounding effect. I also noticed that it's a problem because like leftists are very good at diagnosing shit. We are so good at pointing out and, and making diagrams and think pieces on the macro shit. We can totally describe on a macro level why people make certain decisions or why certain things, like that's our shit. That's our thing, right? That is literally our thing. You know what I'm saying? This person's not doing this because he's a black person or because he's poor. He's doing this because of socioeconomic factors. Like we are good on stating the macrocosms of certain issues. However, what we suck at is that we do not move or talk to each other or others as though those two dots were fucking connected. We don't. We constantly talk to people as from the position of individuality, despite the fact that we know that, the, that shit is bigger than just the individual. Like we know that for a fact. Like I have seen motherfuckers arguing with some asshole on the right or somebody, some centrist, whatever, totally give a whole goddamn di diatribe for four hours about micro shit. But three days later, we'll be like, well, because you are this person and you wanna do this, then you're part of the problem and you are a murderer. Like that doesn't, that doesn't compute. So is it, is it cognitive dissonance? Is it performative shit that you're doing? Like, why are you doing that? And it's not, I mean, like, it's not helpful, in my opinion, to do that. Like, we need to start not just talking as if theory is theory, but actually living as if theory is fact, because that, scientifically, that's what a theory is. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we can't just be walking around here. Like, I walk around, the earth is round. I know that. Most like when it comes to that aspect of my life, I function around that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm taking planes 
because I, I fly places because I understand that the world is round. Like I, my whole reality has totally incorporated that fucking fact. But we don't do that with our political theory. Here's another example, and we're going to go right back to the military thing. There was a conversation that I was witnessing, as well as dabbling my toe in a little bit, where this person was explaining why they were against allowing trans people into the military, right? They are anti-trans military inclusion. So from their perspective, if you trans people shouldn't be allowed to be in the military because anyone who is attached to the military is a murderer because the military is the hard power arm of the American imperialist. These are my words, the American imperialist apparatus that directly harms and kills Muslim and Arabs in Muslim or in Middle Eastern countries. Right now, in theory, on paper. I guess that makes sense, right? But this boils things down to the individual. Like, if you're a trans person that wants to be in the military, you are a killer. Because if you are a part of the military, you are a part of the killing apparatus, you are a killer. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that mischaracterizes the function and purpose of the military, as well as its intricacy in America, right? So like for me, I'm a veteran. I didn't see any combat areas during my time of service. Most of my time was in South Korea and in fucking Virginia, working on helicopters. I didn't, sh I didn't shoot a gun at anyone. I've shot guns, but I didn't shoot a gun at any person at any point in time. And most of my work was either being covered in cancerous fluids all day or a humanitarian thing or two. You know what I'm saying? And there are thousands of people in the military currently and past who have that same experience where the extent of their time in the military is just that. I helped a couple of people out in some other countries and I exposed myself to things that will probably make sure that I don't have children anymore. That was my military experience. Now... I understand for people, that's not good enough. You're still too close, right? But when you push these people to their logical progression, like through their whole supposed principle, we end up at the end where everybody's blood, every there's like blood on everyone's hands, right? So let's balloon this then. All right, so there's blood on your hands because you simply joined the military. Well, there are dozens if not hundreds of cities that would not exist without the presence of a military in the city look at virginia for instance you have the seven cities hampton norfolk portsmouth suffolk chesapeake and then like the other cities that i don't give newport news and then uh some other fucking place i don't care about anyways so you have all these cities they would not look the way that they look without the military presence there like the navy at some point decided to consolidate their forces in either norfolk virginia or san diego california and it's not a coincidence that once that process started those cities started to see a lot of economic growth so it's like you can't have a something in the water festival without the navy deciding to put more people guaranteed incomes injecting them into the financial system of those cities. Now, some people would say that they don't want to project culpability onto citizens who are just living their life, but it's like you definitely benefit from the fruits of imperialistic labor there. I personally wouldn't call those people, a lot of them people of color, a lot of them people who just happen to have been born in that area, murderers because they live in a city that benefits from the existence of a military there. Let's expand this even more to national, right? The military doesn't do things for shits and giggles. Like I understand there's like a caricature that people have in their minds of people who serve the military. And trust me, I was a mechanic. I have worked with the goodest of good old boys, okay? I've never heard any of them 
say that they joined the military to murder Arabs. Ever. Like, that's just not who I've come across. Now, granted, again, I wasn't around any SEALs or special forces motherfuckers, so I'm sure that there might be one or two crazy assholes who have that sentiment. For the most part, everybody, even the conservatives in the military, have a very specific view of who they are, who their country is, and what they feel is a grievance that needs to be rectified, right? So, in intentions, people are not out to murder motherfuckers for the most part, right? But most of us don't do shit just to do things. Like, the military is a lot like any other fucking job. Eventually, you don't want to do it anymore. Eventually, you just want to stay at home, butt naked in your house, eating ice cream. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do a bunch of shit, but you got a job, you need to pay bills, you know? And that's how a lot of people treat their time in the military. So... These missions, these jobs, these accomplishments, these goals that we are going for in the military, they don't happen for nothing. One of the jobs of the Navy is to ensure the security of market straits for the seas. So basically, it's just to be the security guards for all the shit that Americans want to buy. So on left tube, all those mer- all that merchandise that you motherfuckers be buying from your favorite left tuber and shit, like... All of that comes from someplace. And thanks to the rise of globalization, they have made it so that one of the most important things about hard power is to ensure that the market remains calm. Now, that's definitely a problem, in my opinion. Like, it's a problem. Like, there's a reason why we're having these wars in these specific Middle Eastern countries or in these specific areas, mostly in the global south, because... The stores are in the north. Everywhere where people want to buy shit is in the north. It's not, it's not where things are getting manufactured. And globalization kind of forces the powers that be to have these proxy wars in places where it will impact the markets as minimally as possible. It's one of the reasons why you're not going to really see a blow-for-blow blow fucking fight between China and the United States. Like, both of those nations depend entirely on the markets being chill as fuck. So they're going to try to have these little fights. It's like like someplace else. They want to do it someplace else. It'll happen someplace else. And that's because of globalization. Now, if that's the case, and by the logic that certain people want to push, that would mean that anybody and everybody in the global north, whether you're poor, whether you're homeless, whether you're rich, any of that shit, because you live in these countries you are a murderer because you are attached and involved in the process and apparatus of the military industrial complex like this is literally how intricate the military industrial complex is now me personally i don't like that thinking because it ignores the fact that the military industrial complex is big enough like when you get big enough to the point where everybody is culpable, then it's not an individual problem. It's not like, hey, we can just stop everybody from doing something and then it'll be okay because that's not fucking true. It's just not. It's, it's like global warming. The problem is more than just plastic straws, my dude. Like The problem is huge. And if we want to change this, we need to start thinking, moving, and talking and incorporating that fact into our reality. And I don't think that we do that, right? I do not think that we as leftists, we make these identifications, we make these connections and these think pieces to point all this shit out, but on our day to day, we don't act like that, we don't act like our think pieces are real. And to me, that's a problem. You know what I'm saying? To me, that is how we get blind spots. That's how you end up not being able to answer questions or provide solutions that legitimately address what the fuck it is that we are pointing to. You know what I'm saying? Like, it should be more than just, oh, here's the problem. Can you believe this problem exists? Look at this. I should have known. Like, it should be more than that. We need to be incorporating how we move in this way. And for me, I don't want to 
I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm a better person than this. I understand and I have absolutely functioned in this way. You know what I'm saying? And I know why we do it. I know that when it comes to to the fact that we only have these debates and conversations online, it makes it very easy to be tribalistic. Very easy. And there are tribes within tribes. You know what I'm saying? There's tribes within tribes within tribes. Like I said, bubbles within bubbles. Bubbleception. So it's like, it's very easy. But we, we're not moving anytime soon. It's not like we're going to move to, I mean, well, I don't know if the economy gets bad enough and everybody has to leave the cities because that's really what would need to happen. There would need to be an infusion where either we go to them or they come to us, but we're not living in the same America in the same area. We physically don't live next to these people. A lot of us don't. Like even in places like Washington State, a lot of the lefty lefties like, you have to fucking buy a car. Like, that's the craziest shit. Do you notice that? Like, you have to buy a car. Like, Richmond, Virginia, for instance, right? Like, they have, like, every 15 minutes, the far-right motherfuckers are butthurt about something, and they come out with their guns to protest some shit. It could be the most mundane shit. It can be some real shit. They just want a reason to go out there and just hurt people's feelings and be provocative, right? So they go out there and they do that. But most of those people don't live in Richmond City proper. Like, they gotta burn some gas to do the shit that they do. You know, like, we don't live around each other anymore. So it's like, we have to change how we're conversing. And at, at the very least, how we talk to each other within our bubbles. How we, how we address people within our bubbles. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I get it, it's hard. It's hard, trust me, because technically, the way that I'm defining the left, K-Hive is in that bubble. And you know, it's hard as fuck to talk to those people. It's hard. It's hard. They make it hard. They do. They make it difficult. I totally get it. It's hard to have a good faith conversation with them. It really is. Like, I feel like there's no way that you can have a good faith conversation with a K-Hive person through text, like through zeros and ones. It has to be in person because... Everybody's performing. Everybody, you know, they got their scripts and they're ready to go. And I'm starting to see the chasm where parts of the left, especially the far left, are segregating. There are no longer, there's a wall being built and we are no longer incorporating left, center left people into our, our dialectic. Like, I'm starting to see the same pattern that we do with people on the far right, where we send out scouts to go and see what the fuck, whatever. Like, we go out there, we send out scouts for some reconnaissance, some surveillance. You know, we go out there, we have somebody have, like, a three-day debate with some asshole who just so happens to fit exactly the worst and strongest stereotype that we have concocted in our bubble and then we take screenshots and bring the receipts back to the bubble for self-confirmation of how much of an asshole that other group is. And I'm noticing that that behavior is happening within the left bubble now. We are building our walls. So the donuts and the blue caps and the K-hives, we are slowly but surely pushing those motherfuckers there. And we are slowly but surely building our mascots for them. And I'm pretty sure at some point, just because people are human, they're going to lean into the mascot that we've gave them. Just like the people on the left leaned into the mascot they gave us, as in Bernie Bros and all this other dumb shit and all that crap. So it's like, this is why I think it's a problem. This is why I think that that way of communicating through social media can be damaging. And the end result is the people in power will still have power. Because in all honesty, we have to overcome this. We have to overcome this behavior and congealed. And like if we, we're going in the opposite direction. Because if we're building walls for the K-Hive and all them motherfuckers. And like it's reciprocal. They are building their walls as well. It's not just people on the fur further left that are doing this. We are separate like... 
you know, each other. We're not pushing, but it's like tectonic plates. We're separating, right? And it's like, okay, we need to be going in the opposite direction. Because whether we like it or not, those K-Hive people, they're still at the bottom. It doesn't feel like the bottom for them because they live in the suburbs, but they're still at the bottom. Like, at the end of the day, the powers that be are still 500 people max. You know what I'm saying? Like, the people who are really benefiting from the structures that have been created and the monster that we have are just like 600 motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So there's a strong chance that the motherfuckers that you were arguing with need to be your accomplices in dismantling this shit. And on top of that, an even bigger hill to climb is trying to find solidarity and kinship with people on the far right. Like, if we can't even do that shit with K-Hive motherfuckers, we are definitely, definitely not doing it with the people on the far right. And that only ensures the powers that be continue to have power. Personally, that's a fucking problem. Like, that's a problem. And I get it. I understand there are certain principles that you have where it's like, I will not budge. I am the same way. I will not budge on things like sexual assault or racism and all other stuff. Like, I won't. You know, like, you need to understand this thing, right? So I get it. For certain people, it can be difficult. But... I also understand that on both sides, we have medium-sized apparatuses who financially gain from the fact of making people not understand. Like, people like Candace Owens financially benefit in trying to propagate an idea that, oh, if you're a black person and you get killed, there's a reason for it. Like, there has to be a reason somewhere. Where it's like, bottom line... Citizens shouldn't be extrajudicially shot, like, period. That is the point. That is point, you know? Like, people have a financial incentive for this type of division. And I'm not talking about, like, you need to give up your principles so that we can be kumbaya and shit. I'm saying that we need to adequately construct how we talk to each other, adequately organize how we talk to each other because... The end result is not anything but us dying on our moral high grounds on the left and on the right. Like we're all going to starve to death on these moral high grounds. And you can't like the moral high horse is imaginary. You can't kill that bitch and make stakes. You know what I'm saying? Like we all end up starving. And that is the future that I see that I don't want to be a part of. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want... If I have kids or my stepkids, I don't want them to have to deal with that. Like, I feel like this is something that we need to overcome because we're the problems that we're going to be facing in the future, like climate change, like nationalistic imperialism. And it, it happens no matter the ideology of the country. Imperialism happens. How do we address that shit? Because at the end of the day, we at the bottom still suffer like the shit rolls downhill and every fucking country makes sure that whoever they decided was going to be at the bottom gets the worst end of the stick that is a problem and it's a problem that's in every fucking country how do we change that you know what i'm saying like there are things that we need to be working on that i feel like we could be doing better if we just knew who the fuck we were talking to you know what i'm saying and also i guess not go looking for a fight. You know, because I think that for one of the reasons why we talk to each other as if we are the nigga that we want to be talking to is the fact that we don't want to ha- like waste our time and energy and drain ourselves on bad faith arguments because there are scouts. You know, there are people who come from either side or either ideology who are just looking for caricatures. They're just looking for receipts to create, to bring back to the fucking hive, to bitch and moan about. That's it. And that can't be sustained. You know, I think it's good for us to identify when people are trying to do that. Like identify like, oh, you are having a bad faith argument and I don't necessarily need to 
bothered with you about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to spend that seven hours talking to you about this shit when I see that you are not listening, you're not addressing what I'm talking about, and you legitimately have no interest in understanding. I'm not going to do that. I'm not spending, I'm not, and I'm not going to spend seven hours trying to convince you to have a good faith argument. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not, you know, that's not valuable time spent, in my opinion. But I also know that it's difficult because that's kind of how these social media platforms are structured. They're structured for that type of communication. Like, it's not structured to have constructive communication at all, ever. And I think that if we were to start, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't really know how to properly or adequately shift that. People's behavior and culture would have to change. And I don't know how to, I don't know what the solution would be to change that. I don't know how we would fix that. Um, other than me, myself, trying to just have good faith arguments and debates and conversations and collaborative conversations and just not start bad faith arguments because I do that sometimes like let's be real and not exacerbate bad faith arguments because I also do that and not you know like RSVP the invitation to a bad faith argument which I also do sometimes like these are behaviors that I probably should also like I don't know I'm not calling on for shit that I don't also do and I feel like because I'm identifying it in myself and I've seen it in others that maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's something we should try to like work on and shit. I know it's easier said than done, but now like the good lefty I am, I just diagnose some micro shit. So <laughs> let's see how we fix this, I guess.